Hi there, hope you're well. In the workshop this week, I'm taking a look at the Bench Dogs Parallel Guides. That's coming up next. And welcome back. Now, in the interest of transparency, this unit has been supplied for review by Bench Dogs. I've not been paid to make this video or to say nice things about the product. As a Bench Dogs affiliate, I may earn from qualifying sales, so be sure to use the offer code 10-minute workshop at checkout for a 5% discount across the board at Bench Dogs Co. UK. So, what's a parallel guide system when it's at home? Well, Festool introduced the parallel guides in 2013 or thereabouts as a guide rail accessory for its track saws. Track saws, plunge saws are fantastic tools for all kinds of things, but particularly for breaking down full-sized sheets of MDF or plywood, and especially in a small workshop like this one, because you take the saw to the work and you need far less space around the workpiece. The parallel guides attached to the guide rail and made it easy to make accurate, repetitive, consistent cuts that were parallel to the edge that you were referencing from. Now, since the Festool Originals, there's been lots of commercial parallel guides available, as well as plenty of homebrew options. I made a set way back early on in the channel, and more recently I made these ones as part of the Traxor Workshop series. Now, these do function, but they just sit on the rail, and if you need to rip an entire 8x4 sheet into strips, then you really want to have a set that latches onto the guide rail and stays with it as you move it along. Now it's worth noting as well that the cuts you make with a parallel guide are not necessarily square. As long as they're set up right, and we'll take a look at that in just a sec, they will make a cut that's parallel to the edge that you're referencing from, but they do perform a different function to, say, a rail square. Maybe there's a video in that explaining the pros and cons of parallel guides versus rail squares. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd like to see. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the Bench Dogs Parallel Guides. Now this is the full production kit. I had a pre-production version as well, and based on the feedback that Bench Dogs received from myself and others, there have been a few small changes. I did use the pre-production version when I was breaking down the full sheets of MDF for my cabinetry basic series, and if you saw those videos then you'll know that I value consistency above all else, because if you're referencing off the front and back edges of a cabinet, for example, and using an unforgiving connector like a dowel, then you do have to be absolutely spot on. And they were absolutely flawless. I was very, very impressed. But this is the full production kit. It's available in Imperial and Metric, and it's the Metric one that I'll be using here. And there are three options available, with these options basically about how the rails, how the extrusion is arranged. You can have the kit with one long rail at just under a metre, 39 inches or thereabouts, and it comes with an additional 350 mil of extrusion that can either be used to extend the length of the guide for an even wider rip, or be used as a short rail in its own right. Or there's another function that we'll get to later on. I think this set is probably best suited for workshop use. The 350 mil extrusion isn't quite long enough to let you rip a full sheet in half, for example, and using a full metre of rail just to get an extra 70 mil of cut or so might make it a little bit unwieldy outside the workshop. In another set, you can have that same rail cut into three 330 mil or 13 inch sections with joining bars supplied so you can make up the full rail, but also have it shorter for when you're making narrow cuts. And having the rails this much shorter means that it's easier to store in, say, a sustainer, as well as being easier to handle. And finally, there's the simple two rail option with a pair of rails at around 450 mil. And that's the one that I think I'd go for personally, because combined with the typical guide rail width of 200 mil, that gives you up to around a 620 mil rip, so a little bit more than a half sheet of a standard 8x4, 2440 by 1220 sheet of MDF or plywood. And of course, if you need a wider rip than that, then you still have the additional rail that comes with the kit that you can add in to extend it. So let's take a look at our two rail kit and see how it all goes together. It is all very simple. There's a two hole T-nut that slips into the underside of the rail at the end with the Bench Dogs logo. Then the body of the track adapter screws into the T-nut. We can slip the track adapter into the guide rail T-slot and then attach the body using the supplied thumb screws. And finally, add on the stops. Now 
uh, fairly obviously if you want the scales to be accurate you've got to calibrate the guides dial them into your rails because the rails all vary a little bit and there's a few ways you can do this my preferred way is to reference it off a piece of board of a known dimension and that's what i'm going to do next this offcut of 18 mil birch ply is 315 mil across it could be anything it doesn't really matter and i've set it against a piece of 25 mil ply that acts as a fence I've set the stops to 315 mil on the scale and slightly slackened off the bolts that attached to the T-nuts then gently eased the rail away from the track adapter body. With the track splinter guard butted up against the fence, I can gently ease the rails onto the track adapter until the stops just touch the birch ply. Then nip the screws up, just rechecking them before tightening them up fully. Once calibrated, that's pretty much done provided you're using the same saw and blade combination, but it's always worth checking periodically, especially if you use different blades. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, so I mentioned earlier on that the 350mm bars that come with the long rail set have another trick up their sleeve. In fact, they all have a trick up their sleeve because on the back of that extrusion, there's another scale that allows for narrow cuts. Basically, you can whip off the extrusion and attach it to the underside of the track adapter with the alternative bolts that come in the kit. And with a truncated scale face up, whatever the scale reads against the end of the track adapter, well that'll be the width of your cut. Now I've got to be honest, I'm not really a fan of working this way around with the under track bar like this. I think it causes as many niggles as it solves, not least of which being that you've just messed up the calibration of your parallel guides for regular cuts or that you can't actually calibrate these bars for the narrow rips and the fact that you only have a tiny section of the guide rail resting on the actual workpiece being cut. Above all else though, there are simply other ways to achieve the same results, whether that's by adding a packer of a known dimension in under the rail against the regular stops, or just making a wayside cut using something like these wayside jigs from Straw Bike Workshop. But it is a feature of the Bench Dog's parallel guides, and if you bought a set and wondered what the underside markings were for, well, now you know. Ralph at Bench Dogs does tell me though that there's an alternative dedicated product coming along shortly specifically to take care of those narrow rips so keep your eyes peeled for that one. The Bench Dogs Parallel Guides have been on pre-order for a little while and started shipping just this week. They're on the Bench Dogs website with a list price of £120 including VAT for any of the variants that we looked at today and at the time of making this video they were still available at the pre-order price of just £100 including that and don't forget that offer code of 10 minute workshop at checkout for an additional 5% across the board. I'll leave it there I think for this week though. I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of the Bench Dogs Parallel Guides and if you did then give the video a thumbs up or two or leave me a comment down below there are links in the video description to the products that i've shown here today so be sure to take a look for additional information but i'll leave it there thanks for watching don't forget to leave me a comment if you'd like to see a rail square versus parallel guides video and as always thanks so much to my patreon pals and my youtube members for their amazing support if you'd like to be part of the conversation part of the community that helps shape the content of these public facing videos as well as getting access to behind the scenes and exclusive content then come and join us as a Patreon supporter or YouTube member. We'd love to have you on board and taking part. But that's it for this week, though. Thanks again for watching. As always, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. So this is the full production kit. I had a pre-production version, and based on the feedback that BenchDog received from myself and others, there have been a few small changes. I did use a pre-production version when I was breaking down the full sheets of MDF for the Cabinetry Basic series, and if you saw those videos, then you'll know that I value consistency above all else, because if you're a reference, 
Hi there, I hope you're well. In the workshop this week we're taking a look at the Bench Dogs Parallel Guides from Bench Dogs. I said that. Uh, fairly obviously, if you want these scales to be accurate, you've got to calibrate the dials, dial them in. <clears throat> now, fairly obviously, if you want these scales to be accurate, you have to calibrate the guides, dial them into your rails, because rails all ways vary. Now, fairly obviously, if you want to uh, now, fairly obviously, if you want the scales to be accurate, you have to... God's sake! Of all else, though, there are simply other ways to achieve the same result, whether that's adding a packer of a known dimension in under the rail against the regular stops, or just making a wayside cut using something like these. These. Don't go away. Don't go away. No, these. Ugh.